Mavenclad or cladribine, a pill for MS that's an induction therapy and has the potential to induce long-term remission but does have some potentially serious side effects like cancer and infection. Today we're going to talk about how it works, the unique dosing regimen, the results in clinical trials, and of course the safety and monitoring and potential side effects and a few miscellaneous topics. I have some timestamps if you want to skip ahead and remember what Louis Pasteur said, chance favors the prepared mind. Let's have some fun. Cladribine is a purine anti-metabolite, meaning it resembles purines, which are components of DNA, and interferes with DNA synthesis. It's used for relapsing forms of MS and active secondary progressive MS, in other words, SPMS, with relapses or with MRI activity. Cladribine is actually an old drug and it has been approved for a long time for cancer in the form Lustatin and it's used to treat hairy cell leukemia and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I'll talk briefly about the pharmacology and mechanism of action, which will help us to understand some of the drug-drug interactions later on. So cladribine is actually a prodrug which becomes active only after it's phosphorylated. It's transported by various transportation systems in the blood, including P-glycoprotein and breast cancer resistance protein. You can see it's a simple small molecule that can easily cross the blood-brain barrier, and it's similar to adenosine, except instead of it having a hydrogen here, it has a chlorine, and hence it does not participate in DNA synthesis, and in fact competes for and clogs up those enzymes, causing rapidly dividing cells to die. And it preferentially affects T and B lymphocytes, which are cells involved in inflammation in multiple sclerosis, and these cells are abundant in MS lesions. This drug has a very short half-life of only one day, but the actual clinical effect of the drug is delayed and the white blood cells go down and reach their nadir after about two months, and then they slowly come up after six months or even more, and it's excreted by the kidneys, and so you have to have good functioning kidneys in order to take this drug safely. Cladribine has a very unique dosing regimen different from any other MS drug, and it's dosed based on weight. So the tablets are 10 milligrams, and a cumulative dosage is given of 3.5 milligrams per kilogram. However, this is divided into two courses, which are 1.75 milligrams per kilogram each, and then each course is divided into two cycles. So two courses, two cycles each. The first cycle is given, and then the second cycle is given about a month later, 23 to 27 days later. And so you take the cycle dosage as one to two tablets once daily over four to five consecutive days. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Then you do the second cycle a month later, then you do absolutely nothing for an entire year, and then a year later you complete the second course where you again do the two cycles. Now after that, you don't necessarily have to take substance subsequent medications, but if you do do a third course of cladribine, it's recommended to wait at least two years because there may be an increased risk of certain side effects such as cancer if you take a third course too soon. Also with multiple courses, there's a tendency for your white blood cells to go lower and to stay lower for a longer period of time. So this is an example of what the dosing looks like. So this is year one or course one. So the first month you're going to do cycle one over five days, then you're going to wait a month and do the second cycle. Cycle. Then you're going to wait a whole year, and then in the second year, you're going to again do the second course, which is cycle one, and then a month later, cycle two. Then to calculate your dose, you look at this chart. So for instance, let's say you weigh 75 kilograms. You weigh between 70 and 80 kilograms, so you're going to take seven tablets or 70 milligrams for each the first and second cycle, and you're going to take it over a period of five days. So again, between 70 and 80 milligrams, you'll take seven tablets and you'll take them two the first day, then two, then one, then one, then one, nothing for 23 to 27 days. Then again, you'll take seven tablets divided over five days, two, two, one, 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 and that's the second cycle of the first course. By the way, my name is Brandon Bieber. I make videos about MS every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And if you enjoy the video, please click like. So how good is this drug anyways? Let's take a look at some of the clinical trials. You're looking at the results of the CLARITY trial, which is a randomized trial of Mavenclad versus placebo in relapsing forms of MS. There were 433 people with Mavenclad and 437 getting placebo. And you can see the primary endpoint was the annualized relapse rate or the average number of 
of relapses per person per year. For the placebo group, it was 0.33, meaning on average one relapse every three years. But in the maven clad group, it was much lower, only 0.14, or about one relapse per seven years. That's a 58% reduction. In terms of the proportion of people with no relapses whatsoever, it was 81% taking maven clad versus 63% taking placebo. And they also looked at disability progression on the EDSS scale. If you want to learn more about EDSS, take a look at the card above. And 19% of people taking placebo had progression of disability versus only 13% taking Mavenclad. That's about 33% less. In terms of MRI outcomes, they looked at gadolinium enhancing lesions, lesions that take up the contrast dye on MRI, and new T2 lesions. And you can see there were some new lesions in the placebo group, but none whatsoever taking Mavenclad. So it was very effective at suppressing MRI activity. But how good is cladribine long term? This is the Clarinet MS study looking at how people did after they stopped taking cladribine. So year zero is actually the last time people took cladribine. And this is looking at 17 Italian MS studies and various pivotal trials, including Clarity, Clarity Extension, Onward, and Oracle MS. So at year zero, they all were free of relapses. This is the percentage of people who are free of new relapses. But by by year five, only 60% were free of having relapses, which I would say is pretty good. The next thing to look at is the probability of being free of disability progression. And you can see there's a little bit of a difference between the trials. If you look at the Oracle study, about 80% were free of disability progression, which is excellent. But if you look at the Onward and Clarity studies, it was only around 60% or even less, more like 50%. Then we can look at the percentage who did not need a cane. This is the percentage of people who did not have an EDSS of six or greater. In other words, people who were walking independently. So if you look at the Oracle study, it's 100%. So no one needed a cane, which is excellent. But if you look at the other two studies, for Clarity, it was around 80%. And then maybe for Oracle, around 65%. Not that great, considering the average age at the end of the study of these patients was about 44 years old, so relatively young. Now, the last thing that I think is very damning is the percentage of people who are free of treatment change. In other words, the percentage of people who just took cladribine and never took anything else. Remember, cladribine didn't get FDA approved, so a lot of these people ended up on other disease-modifying therapies. Of course, now cladribine is FDA approved, but this was long after the Clarity study was completed. And you can see at the end of five years, only around maybe 30% on average have not taken another medication. So cladribine was billed as this sort of micro-induction therapy, kind of like hematopoietic stem cell transplant, but less aggressive, but I don't think so. It's good, but not that good. A lot of people end up needing other medications. In fact, the majority of people, according to this study. Now we'll shift to the side effects of cladribine. So after taking cladribine, people can experience some temporary side effects, such as headache and fatigue, but there are many potentially serious side effects. For example, because the drug affects DNA synthesis, it can cause birth defects and is not recommended during pregnancy or in women trying to become pregnant. Also, even though the half-life is very, very short, it causes immunosuppression, which can potentially cause other side effects during pregnancy and complications of pregnancy. So they recommend not trying to get pregnant for six months after taking this medication just to allow your immune system to come back. Now, of course, this medication works by lowering the white blood cell count and it can cause infections. The white blood cells reach their nadir or low point at around two or three months and usually come up at around six months, although sometimes it can take longer. And about half of people get some type of infection while taking cladribine though they're usually mild. I'll talk about some of the more severe potential infections in a moment. Some people can get anemia, about a quarter of people. Hair loss is rare, only about 3%. Some people, 11%, can have low platelets, which are involved in the formation of blood clots, so bleeding is a potential complication, although quite rare. Liver injury is very rare, only 0.3%. Some people, about 11%, can be allergic to this medication, often having rash, although sometimes it can be more severe and involve the mucous membranes like the mouth and it can be severe in about 0.5%. This drug has also been linked to cancer. More on that in just a moment. Because of these side effects, there are various contraindications to cladribine or reasons you shouldn't take the drug, such as currently having cancer. If you're pregnant or want to become pregnant, as I said, you should wait six months. And for breastfeeding, they recommend waiting at least 10 days. These are dicey issues, so I suggest you talk to your own provider. Also, if you have HIV or other chronic infections, such as hepatitis or tuberculosis, you're not the best candidate for cladribine. Or 
if you have moderate to severe liver or kidney disease, and specifically because the medication is excreted by the kidneys, they recommend you have a creatinine clearance of at least 60 mils per minute. Probably the most feared side effect of cladribine is the risk of cancer, and in clinical trials, they found the rate of cancer was doubled to 0.27 events per 100 patient years. But I point out this is a relatively low rate of cancer, only about one cancer per 400 years, although it was even lower for placebo of only 0.13 events per 100 years. And it doesn't cause any specific cancer. Some random cancers that were reported, for example, were metastatic pancreatic carcinoma, malignant melanoma, ovarian cancer. There was another study later on that observed people for four years from various clinical trials. And out of 1,976 people, there were 24 reported cancers. Again, various cancers, no specific cancer. And they calculated the expected rate of cancer, and they would have expected to find 22.6 cancers. So no real difference there. My opinion is that this drug does cause cancer, although the absolute risk is probably relatively low. Now to reduce the risk of side effects, these are the recommendations for screening prior to starting cladribine. You want to have a complete blood count, test for HIV and hepatitis B and C, if necessary, a pregnancy test and recommendations for appropriate birth control, liver and kidney tests, and also completing recommended vaccinations prior to getting the drug since it is an immunosuppression, including the vaccine for shingles, and screening for latent tuberculosis such as the skin PPD test or the quantiferin blood test and a baseline MRI scan of the brain. During treatment, it's advised to have the complete blood count checked two months after getting cladribine for each cycle and then at six months and then at one year prior to starting the second course or any subsequent course, and you want the lymphocytes, the B and T cells, to go back up prior to getting the course, and you want them to be greater than 800 cells per microliter. If the absolute lymphocyte count is less than 200 cells per microliter, it's advised to have this test monthly because that can be quite dangerous, and it's also advised to use medication to prevent herpes infections such as cold sores, genital herpes, or other more serious herpes infections. That is, if the count is less than 200, and you also want to avoid live vaccines while your immune system is suppressed, because rarely live vaccines, such as the old shingles vaccine or the Sabin polio vaccine, can actually cause infections. Now, because of the complicated metabolism of cladribine I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of potential drug-drug interactions, so I would definitely recommend checking with your physician or a pharmacist prior to starting cladribine just to make sure there are no significant interactions with anything else you might be taking. For example, because cladribine undergoes intracellular phosphorylation of a prodrug to turn into the active compound, there's a potential competition with other drugs that also undergo phosphorylation. One example would be the HIV drug zidovudine, which of course you wouldn't be taking anyway because HIV is a contraindication to cladribine for MS. Also, because of the various transporters that cladribine uses, there are other drugs that use it. similar transporters. I'll highlight a few. You can see them listed here. One example would be the popular supplement curcumin and the blood pressure medication nifedipine. Because of the BCRP or PGP transport use, there are some drugs that actually induce those transporters, such as corticosteroids, such as prednisone or solumedrol, which you normally would not receive with cladribine unless you have a serious allergic reaction. The other one would be the supplement used for depression, St. John's wort. Now, Mavenclad contains an inactive ingredient called hydroxypropyl betadex, which isn't harmful, but it can actually complex with some other drugs and potentially make them less effective. This is very temporary because the half-life is very short, but potentially drugs such as ibuprofen, the diuretic Lasix, and the nerve pain medication gabapentin could potentially be less effective shortly after receiving cladribine. This isn't like a contraindication to cladribine, just something to take note of if you have more nerve pain. It might be because your gabapentin is temporarily less effective. And finally, I want to end with a few miscellaneous topics. One thing I didn't mention earlier is that although other cytotoxic drugs such as cytoxan carry a risk of missed periods and infertility, typically that does not occur with cladribine, and actually many women successfully have pregnancies later on. There was one study on male rats showing a slight increase in non motile sperm, but it doesn't really significantly affect fertility in men or women as far as we know. There's just the risk if you get pregnant while taking cladribine
Cloudrabine or shortly afterwards. Another random thing is that because Cloudrabine is a significant immunosuppressant, if you receive a blood transfusion, it's thought there could be a small risk of the white blood cells in the blood transfusion attacking the host. In other words, you. This is known as graft versus host disease. This has occurred with cladribine when used to treat other conditions. I'm not aware of it actually happening in multiple sclerosis, but just as a precaution, it's advised to receive a blood transfusion only with irradiated blood. In other words, blood that has received radiation to block graft versus host disease. Again, probably not a real significant risk, but it is recommended. A few other things, you want to handle the drug with dry hands and wash your hands immediately after taking the tablet, just because it is a toxic drug. You don't want to contaminate your eyes or food that other people are going to eat. If you miss a dose, you just want to continue the regimen taking the dose the following day. You don't want a double dose. You want to take the tablet with water and swallow it whole. You don't chew the tablets, but you can take it with or without food. It's also advised not to take other medications within three hours, just in case there's some effect on the metabolism. You want to go ahead and take the pill and swallow it immediately. You don't want to leave it on your skin for too long because it can be a little bit toxic to the skin. I'd love to know if you've taken Maven Clad. What are your results? Have you had good results in terms of your MS? Have you had side effects? And if you have any other questions, please post in the comments below along with suggestions for future videos.